so many great combinations in this world, but perhaps the one that trumps them all is chocolate and peanut butter. Those two sound so good together. Now, I know a lot of people are allergic to nuts, but those of you that aren't know exactly what I'm talking about here. Anytime I think of peanut butter, I think of the everlasting debate, creamy or crunchy. You know, it's funny, over the years, I've fluctuated back and forth between the creamy gang and the crunchy gang. I think ultimately, I always land on creamy, and I'm not sure why. Something in the back of my mind always just reminds me of that skippy, creamy peanut butter in that light blue jar. All those fake, probably really bad for you synthetic ingredients, but so, so creamy and delicious. I literally used to eat that stuff right out of the jar until I was choking on it. But today, we're gonna take those two amazing things that complement each other so incredibly well, and we're gonna make some chocolate peanut butter fudge. Fudge is probably one of those things that you don't really have that many times a year. You probably only get it once in a while when you go on some little trip and see some cute little fudge store. Maybe get a tiny little square to bring home to your family and friends. At least that's always been my experience with fudge. But why don't we make it at home? It's so easy to make, it's so rich, it's so delicious. It's so soft, almost like biting into a brownie. So I say it again, why don't we make it more at home? That's exactly what we're gonna do today, but we're gonna use the chocolate from a cacao pot. After all, in this cacao series, we always get our chocolate the freshest way possible. Overnight from Ecuador in a nice big fresh cacao pot. Like I said, these cacao pods flew in overnight from Ecuador. It's really funny, they keep getting held up at customs and I'm not really sure why. They may think I'm trying to smuggle things in through cacao pods, but honestly, I'm not. I'm just trying to make good food. Now, what I'm holding right here is what I like to call the hero cacao pod. Every single time I get a shipment of cacao pods, I always pick out the one that I think is the most beautiful. And there's always one. Let me show you. Right now, I have about six to eight of these things. Right off the bat when I open it, sometimes they're just ones that are too light green and almost just don't look quite ripe yet to me. You can see on both of these right here that they're obviously beautiful, but they don't quite have that beautiful red vibrancy that some of the other ones typically get. Then some of the other ones are nice and pretty too. But again, this one kind of has a mix of green and red and hasn't fully developed that beautiful reddish color that we get in this one right here. And then of course, since we're shipping them from so far away, oftentimes they come with a nice big crack right through them. If I squeeze it just a little bit, you'll see that it's already kind of open. And I like to say that these are always okay to roast, but I don't really like to eat the flesh off the ones that have a big crack in them. Anyway, I think you already know how we're gonna open these cacao pods up. So let's get some chopping going. Now, of course, we have to go full ninja on everybody right now. Today, I'm doing something a little different and I've lined up four cacao pods right in front of me here. My hand's probably gonna be bright right after this. By now, I've got an outer palm of steel. I'm gonna start from right to left. It's gonna be a rapid fire series of chops, so be prepared. Ah! Before I touch them, let's check. Number one, very solid clean crack. I can very easily peel this one open. I think that's good, but you can be the judges of this. Number two, kind of an odd fracture right across the middle, and then a smaller hairline crack that goes across this way. Again, I think I've cracked this one clean open. This looks pretty set to me. Number three by far and away is the best, and I actually have to hold it closed to make sure that the cacao seeds don't fall out. I don't know exactly what happened to this one, because it was perfectly intact before I touched it, but this one is shattered. And last but not least, the crack is small and almost towards the top of it, so I didn't exactly get the middle of this one, but very easy to peel this back and open it up. So I think I've done a great job here. Now to start, I'm gonna break open my cacao pods and put all the seeds into a bowl. As always, these are so, so fresh and slimy. The gooier and stickier they are, the better the quality. And by that, I mean they're fresher. The more juice these things retain when you get them shipped, the quicker they were probably shipped out from their original destination. And hopefully you can see that these babies are extremely juicy. The flesh is practically dripping through my fingers here, which means these are very fresh. I'll just show you another example of them right out of the pot here. They're glistening with that juice around each seed. And now when I pull it out, listen. I'll crack that last one open and push in those seeds. For those of you that haven't seen this series before, yes, this is exactly where chocolate comes from. There may not be a lot of this in your traditional Hershey's bar, but in a true chocolate bar, there's a lot of this cacao. At this point, I'd cover this up here and let these ferment for a week. Because I don't wanna make you wait, I've already done this and I've already placed some in the oven right behind me to roast them. So I'll bring those out right now. Once these have come out of the oven, they'll be golden brown and dark. They'll have a really chocolatey, nutty flavor to them. The aroma permeates the entire room and it's incredible. When I pick one of these seeds up, it doesn't really look like much at first. But when I crack it between my fingers, that's when I get cacao nibs. Once I separate all that shell, I'm left with these beautiful nibs that you've probably seen on top of smoothie bowls, or maybe sprinkle the top some baked goods. But this is what's blended into chocolate. So in order to make our fudge, we're gonna do exactly that. To start with our spice grinder, I'm gonna pour in some of my cacao nibs. I'll follow it with just a little bit of sugar. But keep in mind, we're adding sugar to our fudge, so we don't need this chocolate to be too sugary. Then, almost like blending peanuts into peanut butter, which we'll do momentarily, I'm gonna slowly pulse this until we get a chocolate paste. 
Once this is complete, set it aside for later use. In a small saucepan, I'll start with three cups or 600 grams of sugar. Then I'll add one and a half sticks, also known as three quarters cups or 170 grams of butter. Then two thirds cup or 168 grams of evaporated milk. I'll slowly stir these to combine and then bring them to a boil. With an instant read thermometer, whisk this constantly. And after about five minutes, your mixture should get close to the desired temperature. The second it hits 234 degrees Fahrenheit on your instant read thermometer, take it off the heat. And when you do this, immediately add in your chocolate chips. Whisk a little bit until that chocolate is well combined and fully melted. It should really only take a few seconds for that to happen. Once this is mixed, we're gonna add about seven ounces of marshmallow fluff, which should be about one jar. When I was a kid, I used to make peanut butter and fluff sandwiches all the time. We called them fluffer nutters. And I always said that unless you were choking on your fluffer nutter, meaning there was so much peanut butter and fluff in that thing, you weren't doing it right. Slowly stir in that fluff with that chocolate mixture. It should really thicken up a lot at this point, and you might need to sub in somebody else to help you stir. What I will say though, is that this workout right now is going to be worth it. Already, you'll start smelling that amazing, amazing flavor of fudge that you can't possibly mistake for anything else. Once you've mixed that in, also add just a little bit of vanilla extract. This right here is my homemade vanilla extract and it's not quite yet as powerful as you might get at the store, but you'll wanna add in about one teaspoon when you do this step. Then whisk to combine this one last time and we'll set it aside for just a few moments. For our peanut butter, we'll sprinkle on about a cup of peanuts. I'm just gonna roast these a little bit more to get extra flavor out of them. Then of course, we'll turn this into our own peanut butter by blending it. I'll roast these for just a short bit at 350 Fahrenheit. To make our peanut butter, we'll slide all of our peanuts into this blender. Homemade peanut butter is one of the easiest things out there to make. And let me tell you, it is more than worth it. We'll add on our lid and then blend these until they reach a nice fine paste. Once that peanut butter's gotten nice and creamy, turn off your blender. It really is cool that you can go from peanuts to this in no time with just a blender. And if you wanna make honey roasted peanut butter, just put a bunch of honey on them before you roast them or add honey to them while you're blending. So many cool things that you can do at home that most people don't know about. Now into a new bowl, we'll do a half cup or about 113 grams of melted butter, then one cup or about 125 grams confectioner's sugar. And to finish, about a cup of our beautiful homemade peanut butter. Just look at that stuff flow. I'm gonna gently mix all of this up until it's a nice little paste. What this will do is basically swirl nicely into our final fudge product to give us a nice even spread of peanut butter and also hopefully a nice little swirl of color. Here's how I like to combine our fudge at the end. First, I'll add all of the chocolate fudge mixture to a new bowl. Then whisk this up again so it's nice and well combined. Once I've combined that, I'll add in about half of my peanut butter mixture. Then I'll stir to combine this. And this will give us that initial mix of peanut butter fudge. Once this is set, I'll switch in our lined baking dish. Then I'll put in most of that chocolate fudge to layer the whole thing. I really can't tell you how amazing the smell is right now. After this, I'll smooth it down just a little bit to really make sure that it sets nicely and evenly. Then I'll start taking swirls of my peanut butter and placing it right through the chocolate, which will hopefully give me these really nice patterns on my final product. At this point, your fudge is ready to cool. Let this sit for two hours and then we can cut into it and enjoy. While we're waiting for that fudge to set, everyone keeps commenting, DMing, and asking me where I get my cacao pods. And I've finally got an answer for you. In fact, I've got a way for you to try a cacao pod. Blue Stripes Cacao is the company that sends me all my cacao pods from Ecuador. To be clear, this is not an ad at all. I don't get paid by them when I use their cacao pods or do anything with their products. They just love that I use cacao and educate people, so they keep sending me pods to use. To get your pod, go to the link in my description. You'll be getting six cacao waters and a free cacao pod. It basically tastes like a tropical lemonade with a hint of vanilla and also a bit of lychee. So click on the link in the description and here I'm gonna choose a mixed pack. Then add this to your cart. Go to your cart and at checkout, plug in promo code Nick to get 15% off, free shipping, and a free cacao pod. It took me a bit of time to get this all arranged. Again, I'm not getting any money for this or from your purchases. This is just for you. In the mail, you'll get all of this, and you can finally taste one of these in the flesh. Now finally, after two hours, we're ready to cut into that fudge. And I have to say, it looks really good. First, I wanna let you look at the pattern a little bit. It actually looks like that peanut butter spot that we got on top worked really well. I'm gonna dig into here with the parchment and hopefully pull this thing all out in one nice piece. This is a good sign that your fudge has set really well. After this, we'll peel back all of the parchment paper on the side of our fudge. Then I'll come in with my trusty knife and cut this into four nice big cubes to begin. Look at that clean cut. If it wasn't set yet, your knife probably would have stuff all over it. And that's another good sign that you should probably let it set for a little bit longer. Also, if you want to speed up the setting process, you can definitely toss this in the fridge or the freezer for just a little while. And that'll help speed things up just a little bit, especially if you're impatient like me. Now I'll lift up a few pieces of my fudge and just take a look at the side of that there. If you have a nice smooth edge to the fudge, 
fudge there, you've done it. That right there is some amazing homemade chocolate peanut butter fudge. I cannot wait to dig into this. To start, take a look at my favorite piece of fudge right here. I'm dead serious when I say that that's up there with the prettiest fudge I've ever seen. And granted, people don't often try to make it look pretty like this, but that looks beautiful. I love that almost splat-like pattern that we have on there with the peanut butter. And the cooler part about that is that it really mixes up the bites you get every single time. One of the things I will say I don't love about fudge typically, beyond the fact that it's so rich and you can't eat much of it, is that it's usually all the same. Whenever I get fudge, I try to get a fudge that has something mixed around it a little bit. And honestly, if I were to redo this, I would consider putting a few whole peanuts in there for some crunch. But like I said, I like creamy over crunchy. So in this case, I'm okay with it being all smooth. But you get what I mean. It's no fun just eating the same thing over and over again. That's why something like soup is sometimes pretty boring to me. You just sit there slurping over and over and over, and it's just not fun. I think I'm gonna eat this thing like a brownie. So let's just go for it. Mmm, yeah. First word, wow. Second thing I'll say is that if you were to somehow heat this up and give it to me, which I know you couldn't really do, because it would all melt down pretty quickly, knowing what ingredients we have inside, I would totally believe that this is a really rich, decadent chocolate brownie. It is so, so good. But the difference between a brownie and this is that this completely melts in your mouth. Yes, there's a ton of sugar in there, but the sugar coupled with that buttery and fatty, creamy peanut butter, and then of course the butter in there that coats your whole mouth with even more of that oily deliciousness. I mean, this thing is insane. Now, I'm not gonna take like 10 bites of it right now because I know I'm just gonna get another cavity. Just got a couple more filled the other day, but I will take another bite just to get a little bit more of that flavor. That's seriously really good. That's freaking awesome. I'm just gonna say it right now. If you need to get a gift for somebody and you don't know what to get, don't get it. Make homemade fudge. It's so incredibly chocolatey. And the fact that we ground our own peanut butter means we still do get a little chunk of peanut once in a while. Yes, it's super creamy, but I actually really like one tiny little crunch once in a while there. Maybe I'm going back into one of those crunchy peanut butter phases. I don't know. This really is insane and I hope you give it a shot. And in the meantime, thank you for watching the video. That is seriously so good. Please don't forget to subscribe and you gotta join the notifications gang. The other thing is all week, every single time when I'm cooking all these videos, I document everything on Instagram. I have so many cool things there that I just don't show on YouTube. I just don't have the time. Again, don't forget to join that notifications gang once you subscribe and please also toss a like on the video. And last, last thing I promise, if you want it, don't forget to go to that top link in my description to get some cacao pods. I really did work hard to get this opportunity for you all and I'm not really sure how long they're keeping it on their website, but just go get one so you can have a sense of what I'm talking about every time I use a cacao pod. Until next time.